The ANA eLearning Academy is brought to you by CDN Graysheet, a trusted source of rare coin and currency valuations since 1963. everyone, thank you for joining us today for the ANA eLearning Academy. The ANA would like to thank our partner Graysheet for their support of the eLearning Academy. Today we have presenter past president Walt Ostromecki, who will be presenting on April 13th, 1976. If you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the chat or the Q&A as you will be muted and I will read them to him at the end. And without further ado, here's Walt. Well, good afternoon or good good evening or good morning, wherever you are throughout the country. I think you're going to find this program a little bit different than what you're used to. And if you all recall where you were on April 13th, 1976, and what you accomplished that particular day, you'll find this program as a remembrance of a kickoff event for our bicentennial dealing with the $2 bill. I'll preface my comment by saying that my collection of postmarks $2 bills spans April 13th and July 4th. I have a total of 22,367 different city postmarks. So some of those you're going to get to see, look at some of the funny names and so forth. Anyway, we'll begin. Let's move on. Uh -oh. All right, here we come. There she comes. Okay, April 13th. A numismatic kickoff event day to be remembered. The first day of release of the new redesigned $2 note was on Thomas Jefferson's birthday, the 233rd on April 13th. When 13 cents postage was affixed to the new note, it could be then presented to any post office and receive a postmark date of April 13th, 1976. Thus, it is the first day of release for whatever, so it could be forever verified. Numismatic result is what we're going to be viewing and talking about during this program. It has been dubbed as a souvenir for the bicentennial. The collectors that specialize in this area, such as myself, know these as B2, FDC, or FDCI, first day of issue, depending on your preference. Okay, this is there we go. We're speeding up a little bit here. So the first day of issue became a historic national bicentennial event. And the collectible that was produced had the portrait of Thomas Jefferson enshrined on it for posterity. The date will be forever remembered by numismatists. And I'm sure if Mr. Jefferson here is here, he would remember it as well. Do you realize that Jefferson first appeared on a $2 bill in 1869? However, Alexander Hamilton was the first to be portrayed or pictured on a $2 note back in 1862. I like the Jefferson's principle here. Being a university person myself at UCLA, I have a lot of contacts and alumnus. And the University of Virginia at Charlottesville there, founded back on January 25th, 1819 by Thomas Jefferson. Three original board members, it's interesting to note, were Thomas Jefferson, look at that, James Madison, and James Monroe. The Alumni Association there issued a 1976 $2 note, which is pictured here on a special card that they made up. And believe it or not, they cost 50 bucks. Even today, they're probably not worth but, but half that, but they are a beginning collectible for people to really see and enjoy. So sit back, enjoy this historical journey as we begin our story here of B2s with one postmark from, I've in, in, sometimes increasing the size makes the, makes the uh, cancel a little bit difficult to read, but I'm gonna welcome you from North Carolina, which is a town in North Carolina. So here's one of the first B2s. Our hobby collectible adventure officially kicked off back on November 3rd, 1975. And here we have Dateline, Washington, D.C. Secretary of the Treasury, William E. Simon, today announced the issuance or reissuance of a $2 bill as a Federal Reserve note. The series would be 1976. The new note will be issued on April 13th, 
1976, Thomas Jefferson's 233rd birthday, and will feature an engraving of Jefferson and a, port a portrait painted back in the early 1800s by Gilbert Stuart. The reverse of the note will incorporate a rendition of the signing of the Declaration of Independence painted by John Trumbull during the Revolutionary War period. While the design of the note is consistent with the nation's bicentennial, Simon went on to add, it is not solely a bicentennial commemorative, but rather a new $2 bill that fulfills a permanent and practical role in American currency. John Warner, administrator of the American Revolutionary Bicentennial Administration added, the new bill will continue to reaffirm our pride in this document, the $2 bill. And of course it would leave a legacy for the following generations. So with just those two press releases and statement, that could have been the end of our story. Redesign two, and this program could have ended right here within what, about three minutes of starting? But what followed? Let's take a look what followed. Well, this particular news release followed. News release, March 31st, 1976. The United States Postal Service, in an unprecedented move, magnanimously, believe it or not, decided to, perhaps in the spirit of 76, ensure that the every citizen and collector had the opportunity to create for self and posterity a very special United States 200th birthday celebration collectible souvenir. When it was issued, the following press release came out. Post offices nationwide encouraged and authorized to cancel stamps affixed to new $2 bills on April 13th. Well, that was a special bombshell, which flew, which exploded, I guess, or burst onto the scene in a glorious red, white, and blue commemorative keepsake celebration. The B2FDC, a lasting souvenir, memento, which could be passed down from generation to generation. And of course, it aroused the interest in collectors in the hobby, especially paper money collectors. So here are some of the news releases. I won't read them, but I'll leave them here for a few seconds so that they can view them. The Washington Star, if you notice there, Tuesday, a new two. Wow, exciting, a new two. Whoops. Come on there. Additional newspaper coverages are here. A new collector's item is born as a $2 bill is released. On the left side, we get post offices will cancel $2 bills. There was an excitement. And we'll, I won't talk about the Fort Myers one there yet. We'll get to that in just a bit. So here we have an example of just a standard B2FDC or cancel two from April 13th. This one is from Munich and it's not Germany. That is North Dakota. I put the zip codes on so you can look at them. Uh, our story here and city name postmark cancel adventure of April 13th begins with a peekaboo look at what's to come. This particular note is postmarked in a city in Idaho, which still has a post office today at peekaboo. I just thought you'd like to see some unique things. And of course, this is my favorite post office in Oregon. Believe it or not, from Walterville. See, I have my own post office too. I am lucky. All right, this is what we're gonna look at now. There's some rules that the United States Post Office set up in order for you as a citizen or collector to obtain a cancellation on April 13th, 1976. The list of those rules followed and we'll have illustrations as the program goes on about numerous postmark notes. Did they adhere to the rules or did they not? So here we're gonna take some time to read the rules. Okay, first off, the post offices will not provide any $2 bills. You'll have to go to a financial institution first in order to obtain the $2 bill, and then you can bring it to the post office for servicing. Second, you must present that particular bill in person at a post office to a counter clerk. 
There's no limit on the quantity you can have service. No cancellation service will be provided by mail order or any other means. Third, post office cancellation service will only be provided on April 13th. Number four, each $2 bill must, again, I'm underlining the must, must be presented over the counter for servicing, postmarking, to a window clerk. And here's a must, must bear at, at least 13 cents postage or the current first class rate, which 13 cents was. There are no exceptions. Fifth, only a standard postmark cancellation. And we'll take a look at what those look like in just a little bit as the program proceeds. There will be no special first day of issue, special cancellations or pictorials designed for release that day. You'll have to have, the only place you might get anything similar to a particular picture would be at the post geeks or what were called stamp shop post house. And there were only 15 nationwide. And lastly, no post office, regular mail cancellations. In other words, through machines, like you would get a letter today that's canceled, by a machine or postal meagles will be used on $2 bills. And lastly, the postmark cancellations will only be in black or red ink. Okay, now here comes a question to ponder and we'll take a look at this. Question, were the US post office rules laid out for servicing followed to the letter? And as we shall see, Absolutely not. Well, why? Why would they not follow the rules? Well, in reality, many of the post offices were unprepared, especially in big cities. And the, and the sheer fervor pitch of, pan, I guess, pandemonium of millions of Americans seeking cancellations on, op on opening the closing day uh, allowed for, I guess you could say, exceptions. The lead story on a 7 p.m. news coverage in, in Indianapolis said, and it pictured the main post office downtown with an estimated people of 1,500 waiting impatiently in long lines on the street side to have a new $2 bill postmarked. And of course, the post office stayed open way into the night around 11 p.m. But it was interesting to note that all the pandemonium, people on the street waiting on the sidewalks caused a tremendous traffic jam and the police had to be called in to sort of maintain a little order and structure to keep people safe. Lastly, down there in the last paragraph, by the day's end, the U.S. Post Office reported that response was simply overwhelming and unbelievable. A few days later, the U.S. Post Office estimated nationwide that over 10 million that's million. New two dollar bills were in the hands of collectors and ordinary and ordinary citizens. Indeed, a collector bombshell had struck, and the dust would continue to settle for many days to come. So this is what it looked like in my area out here in California. On the left, for people who had to wait, where? Well, this we're used to this nowadays. You waited in line at a bank. And they would give you one or two or three or whatever they wanted to. They had limited quantities available of $2 notes for that day. Then next, you would go to a post office, a local one. The big city ones had long lines. The smaller ones, you know, in rural communities did not have such a problem. But then there was a long line there, too. And again, here's the post office. This is my main office on the left at Van Nuys. And that went all the way out, that's through the back door, around the street, and halfway up another block. The smaller post office that's closer by is in Panorama City. The line did the same thing. There probably were 50 to 80 people throughout the day, most likely at all times, waiting for a postmark cancellation. Well, their diligence paid off, because here's a couple of examples of what citizens created. The one on the left, is postmarked from Los, Al Los Alamos, New Mexico. And the one on the right, look at that interesting post office, Roach, Missouri. How would you feel living in Roach, Missouri? Would you be proud of it? Uh, do you doubt that there's a post office there? Well, here, I'll show it to you. Here's the post office there. Small little rural one. Can imagine a line being out the door that day. 
and there are some fun names. And then there also are other post offices here on the left, which you're supposedly looking at, but help, I can't find my Peggy Texas post office. I don't see it, help, I wanna get my $2 bill postmarked. Well, in order to do that, I put an arrow there at the sign for the Peggy one. There's a drop box behind the note. The post office burned down <laughs> about three months before that at the beginning of the year. But on the right is a, an example of the Peggy Texas postmark for April 13th. Okay, well, a lot of things happen. If you go back to the rules again, remember, notes were supposed to be issued only on April 13th. But Coin World on April 26th released this following article about slippery $2 bills emerging early. Early, what do you mean by emerging early? Well, our, but our B2 collecting adventure starts here. In fact, it starts even before here, even before April 13th, 1976. If you look at the arrow here on the note pictured, notice the date, 1975. Well, this is the year before. How can this be? And I had contacted the postmaster there at the time, and he says they probably forgot to change the date. This was a round date or postmark that they didn't use all the time. And because of probably a long line that particular day outside the post office, they simply forgot to change the date to 1976. So we can move on. Well, is that an April 3rd postmark? No, this particular one here is not an April 3rd, not an earlier one. The number one is there under high magnification. But it's interesting that the color of the ink we talked about earlier, be black or red, is in brown. And the three, the one is just barely there because it's right on the edge of the stamp. So it's faded away. We'll cover some more of these interesting ones a bit. But the earliest documented release of a cancel two on eight on, to be released was on April 6th, 1976. And there's, there's a bank in New York, it's Brewster, where it was released. And there was an article again here in Numismatic News, which talked about that early release. This was done by the, the late author, Alan Herbert, in his column, The Answer Man. So an early release here, well, here's another one, April 9th. We didn't even get the April 13th yet, are we? This is from Largo, Florida, Seminole branch. Ah, what a, uh, the Seminoles. Come on, where you go? There we go. Here's early releases, two more examples. Postmark April 10th. The one on the left is from Kirkersville, Ohio. And the one on the right is the main office at Arizona. Now, why I pictured two or three examples of some notes, I want you to feel that this was just not a one-time fluke at one venue. But it was an ongoing issue because of the unbelievable response to get them. Uh, well, here's, here's another early examples, or are they early examples? Postmark on April 12th. Now, this could be an interesting story. This could be a legitimate April 12th postmark, or in all probability, the post offices, and both of these are small post offices in their respective states, Frisco, Texas on the left, and of course, my favorite, Nixon, Nevada, they forgot to change the date in their excitement because people were outside the post office when it opened at 9 a.m. and they just started canceling notes. So in all probability, most April 12th were not done on April 12th, but with a date forget not being changed on the particular cancel, excuse me. And here we have some here from Chicago, big city, Logan Square. Well, Logan, there's our lady. There's my host today at Logan Square. And of course, here's one from Dearborn, Michigan. So there were a number of April 12th. So let's go back to US Postal Service rule number three, which said cancellation service will be what, if you recall, offered only when on April 13th, 1976. Well, as you can see, 
There were some earlier ones, and of course, the note on the left, postmark at Virgin, Utah, on the 13th. And the one on the right is from Newark, Ohio, postmarked on the 14th. So we'll go through these a little fast to have some fun. April 15th, one of my favorite cities, Chicken, Alaska, with a population today of three on the 15th. Next, the 16th there on the right from Columbus, Ohio, at the Livingston Station. And here's one, oh, April 17th, oh, Wycliffe, Ohio. I'll take a look, they forgot to put the date on it, on the postmark, didn't put an arrow on this particular note. But again, a postmark that was put into service quickly. <clears throat> on the right, we have one from New Britain, Connecticut, postmark the 18th. I remember no postmarks beyond April 13th, they said. I need to keep going. Okay, April 19th, Canton, Ohio. April 20th, Rockville, Maryland. Notice the post, we'll get the thing. Here's one there. I'm going to go on to Charlestown, New Hampshire for the 21st. Westwood, Ohio for the 22nd. And here, I'm, I think you get the point by this time that no, no, no. And this particular cancellations went on up until July 4th, at least, as far as we know. So here we have on the left from Sebring, Florida, the 28th, and May 7th. I'll just throw in one there from Culpeper, Pennsylvania. Okay. Now, rule number four, which we talked, which they mentioned. 13 cents, cents of fixed postage is required to receive a $2 bill at a post office to be postmarked. But was it the case? Well, again, here we have some fun in taking a look at these. On the left, we find no postage. This is from New York, New York, big city, Murray Hill Branch. And on the right, we have one from Natanwaka, Oklahoma. This is an Indian reservation post office. No, no postage again, uh oh, Cherryvale, Kansas. No postage, Las Vegas, Nevada, the airport station. No postage, Hartsville, South Carolina. No postage, Sparkville, New York. So you can see that it wasn't just a fluke, but let's take a look at what else happened. Had no postage. Well, one cent postage. On the left is Sharon, Oklahoma. On the right is Margate, Florida, Trump's home city, one cent postage. Interesting. Issaquah, Washington, one cent, and San Diego College Station, one cent. Notice they all use the current circulating one cent Jefferson stamp at that particular time. Well, how about two cents? Huh? On the left, we've got, look at this, Jefferson, Colorado. Three cents on the right, New York, New York City, Church Street Station. Uh, here's four cents. Well, it's a combination of two from Franklin, Indiana on the left side. Five cent post op from Swan Valley, Idaho. And then we have a six cent. This is not in my collection, this particular one, but a friend sent it to me from Chihuahua, Tennessee. Seven cents. Postage from Hermitage, Tennessee, Jackson's hometown. That's his little library that's there. Here we have an eight cent one from Johnson City, Texas. On the left, and that's also signed by Francine Neff as a courtesy autograph. On the right, nine cents, Salt Lake City, Utah, Pioneer Station. Still haven't seen 13 cents yet, do we? Well, we have here on the left from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, a 10 cent one. And 11 cents from Brewer, Maine. Don't know why they did these, but people must have had fun with them. And then a 12 cent one, look at that. Montebello, Virginia. And 13 cents. I'll take a look at the arrow there and you'll find out that this particular post office branch, it's a rural branch, still exists today, is called Hell, H-E-L-L. -L. Can you imagine telling people, I live in Hell, my zip code is. Well, if you doubt it, there's the post office. It's been open for many years. And if you didn't like that particular one, you could always move on to here, 
to one in Wyoming, which is called Hell's Half Acre. No, just canceled on the left. Beautiful job, which talks about Hell's Half Acre being here as well. Okay, well, let's move on. Well, 13 cents postage. Well, how could you affix it? I guess some collectors and, uh, and people such as myself had fun that day. Here we find, what is it, 13 one cent stamps on two different notes, one from Fort Loudoun, Pennsylvania on the left and one from Fond du Lac in Wisconsin. And they just simply posted them on there and were canceled several times. So it was an interesting creation. Here we have one again. And this particular one has slipped off it. That's why you see the postmarks move. The $2 bill has come loose from the original postal work. But here again, it continues. And they just had fun putting them together. This is from Detroit, Michigan at the Central Station. Okay, about more than 13 cents postage. Why would anybody put more than? Well, looks like some individuals did. On the left here, we have a note postmark from White House. No, not Washington, D.C. That's Ohio. It's on a block of four stamps. And then we have on the right, one from Revere, Pennsylvania, postmark with 51 cents. Now, why were these done? Well, most likely we figure that plate box collectors, they collect their plate box with the numbers on it, put these on twos. Stamp people didn't really accept the $2 note, but they, in all probability, canceled them. Now, here's one. Why would anybody put $2 postage on a $2 bill? Well, maybe the thought of, well, it's $2. We can put two on it as well. That's a good combination. But the real thought here is that many post offices, this was a big one, especially with population at the time of 64,000 plus individuals there ran out of low value postage stamps. And this was the case for many post offices on April 13. They ran simply out of postage. And perhaps that's why they said, well, we'll cancel them with or without postage or with different values of postage rather than the 13 cents. But again, I'm gonna have some more fun, sure. Here's one here on the left, five different cities. They're within a mile, they're within a 50 mile radius of each other. And there's five different postmarks from different cities, all have 13 cent stamps. Interesting. On the left, we have three different Virginia cities. Again, and there's extra postings there, two on the bottom here, and there's one extra stamp not being used. And two different postmarks, but only one 13 cent stamp. On the left from my post office here in Van Nuys and receipt is just a few blocks away. And so I put the two together with only one postage stamp, got away with it. It's interesting here on the right, we have a note from Massachusetts, which honors Lexington and Concord, two very famous battles. One stamp postage, however, and one non-stamp postage. In addition to having postmark cancels, individuals found various ways to commemorate that April 13th day. And the particular one here on the left is from Rochester, New York. Can you imagine what it costs to have a public notary notarize the note? I'll leave it there. You can read the serial number. But from the first, the link uh, from the Lincoln First Bank of Rochester, New York, this particular guy had it notarized and affixed to it. Come to find out, there were several that he had made up. And that's why I purchased one many years ago. And even some of the banks themselves issued particular notes on cards. On the right, we have one from the First National Bank and Trust of Fremont, Nebraska. This one was postmarked. And I'll bet you that was postmarked the day before, but carrying the April 13th postmark on it so they could give them out or sell them to public when the note was released. Well, there we go. How about packets of 100? You could get those from, some po from banks. It's interesting to note the one here on the left is from Lahaina, Hawaii. 
and it's a packet of 100. But the one that's on the right there from New York, from the Bronx, Van Ness, the gentleman wisely postmarked the ban around the 100, as well as the note. Uh, each note in these stacks of 100 is postmarked. And we see a lot of those being sold today on eBay in packets of 100 for, let's say, in excess of $2,500. I wouldn't pay more than $110 for one, but on eBay, you can probably get something you want for anything. All right, here's one, a rule violation, number four. Now, it specifically said United States postage. If you look at this particular note, and that's why I blew it up here as well, postmarked April 13th, Juneau, Alaska. And it shows a $5. Well, that's a duck hunting stamp. It's for a license to hunt ducks. Yet it's canceled on April 13th. This technically is a postal violation. Only U.S. postage could be used, not a $5 duck hunting stamp. Why was this created? I've never been able to find out, but it was brought to a show and canceled. About foreign country cancellations. A gentleman that has passed away that was a coin dealer in Sydney, Florida, took a number of bills down to the Bahamas in Freeport and had them postmarked. I think he made 50 and he wanted 25 bucks at a time. And well, I was into that. I wanted to have something that was unique. And so we have one in the Freeport, the one on the right. Well, not actually foreign. The United Nations stamp is on the right side in New York. And on the left side is a postmark from New York City Grand Central Station. Well, let's get back to the foreign country cancellations. How about a couple from Mexico? On the left, we've got one that's actually postmarked on the 16th, but it's one peso 0.6 postage from Chihuahua. And the one on the right is from Gorbino in Mexico City, and it is from April 16th as well. Ah, but here's one of my favorites, a Mexico and U.S. postmark note. I've been to El Paso, so I know you can walk right across the bridge into Juarez and get something canceled. So here we have a triple cancellation. On the left, we have the state bank there in El Paso has a teller stamp on it dated April 13th as a teller and gives a zip code that this particular note was, was, was picked up from. On the right side top at El, El Paso post office, postmarked on April 13th main office. And below that is Juarez, Mexico postmark on April 16th, that kind of a unique combination. Okay, US Postal Service rule number five, only standard postmark cancellation devices will be used on April 13th. Well, there were actually six different standard hand cancel postmark styles, and I wanna share them with you so you get an idea. We've been seeing some already, and to get it. So on the left, we'll begin with style number one, which is what's called a round or bullseye round dater device, usually used on at this particular time on registration only for red ink. It was black ink, it was regular mail. This is from Fairfield, Connecticut. Style two, it's a four bar device with a zip code. It's from Camula, Hawaii, the big island, but it has the standard four bars on it, as well as the city the date, and the zip code. The third style is on the left. It's a large round circle. They can be various sizes, larger, smaller than this, but it's just a simple circle. Doesn't usually have a zip code. This one is from Lincoln, Nebraska. The fourth style is a wavy cancel. I put this one because it shows the complete waviness. And these were used at this particular time on parcel posts or packages, flats packages. They would just quickly run over it with the design. So these are not too common. This is from Ashland, Oregon. And number five is what we call a date time device ring with two circles. And these again were an older style postmark used, but they were still in use at this particular time. You'll notice it says Forest Lake at the top, 
On the bottom, in the center, it shows the date and time, which usually fades away. And the last style that was available was we talked about a little bit earlier, the stamp shops or postiques. These had special little pictorial councils. And this is one here from Cleveland, Ohio. All right, now those are the cancellation devices that only were supposed to be used on that day. I guess we're going to find out some fun happened as well. It also said no first day of issue. Special postmark cancels would be again. Oops, something happened again. On the left is one from my area here at Van Nuys, California. And I'll tell you the story behind this particular note or the cancellation use. Now, there is a post heap there. But having been on the Postal Advisory Council at this time for the San Fernando Valley, we decided that the post office there at Van Nuys, the new main office, should have a special $2 bill council. And this was the one that was let widely sought after because it wasn't publicized except locally. And these particular notes were selling for as much as $75 shortly after release of April 13th. But it has a dollar bill sign on it and just a beautiful cancel. And the only other city to have a first day of issue was the ones here from New York. And they had the two rounded one with the first day of issue bar above it. Interesting to note what we got here. Two Jefferson stamps, four cents. Should never have been canceled. However, things got out. No special pictorial postmark cancels were authorized, but here we find one from Cleveland, Ohio on the left. Now, this is a stamp shop or what we call postique, but it had a special pictorial cancel. If you look at the cancel just to the right of Jefferson's portrait, you'll find it has, he's telling a history of 17, uh, 1976 and 1776 on this particular cancel. It was a special one change for this particular day. On the left, we have one from Perth Amboy, New New Jersey, excuse me, I got my cold here. Let me take a little break. There we go. And this particular one talks about the royal governor being for the bicentennial. So again, it was a special, if you note the top of the council on the left side of Jefferson, it does say bicentennial and it was a special council. Again, not supposed to be. Now, here we got a real rule violation, and I wish this was an in-person program instead of virtual, but it said no through the mail service, period. And I'm sure you're looking at this, and what do you think? Does this really qualify, or could this actually be one that went through the regular mail? Now, it's interesting because it does, it did, it went through the mail from Bristol, Connecticut, was mailed from Hartford, and passed on. I guess if I was a CSI or below the word Jennings, there's a there's a fingerprint. So we could probably check it see if it was the individual or the postman. But I'll bet this was hand delivered at that particular time to these individuals here. Interesting. Ah, rule number seven. No post office machine cancels. I mentioned that earlier. These are the standard ones that you see today on envelopes. They are two different types. The first one is on the left there, machine cancel. It has a wavy line, and this one is Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Machine cancel here from Stromberg's, <coughs> excuse me, Nebraska, I got it, <coughs> Nebraska, and it talks about a Swedish festival there. Well, it's a Swedish town, but notice the difference here. These are machine cancels. These should not have happened according to post office rules. Were they flukes? Absolutely not. There's Anamosa, Iowa on the left. Here's one from Enterprise. Oh, the Starship Enterprise. No, no, that's Enterprise, Kansas. And then again here to prove it, there's one from Candor, New York, one from Greensboro. So they happen more than ever. This one I find interesting too, because an unauthorized machine postmark, but it was made legal. Why? If you look on the left, you'll see the regular hand cancel. And that was probably done because they missed the stamp with the postal machine cancel, so they hand canceled it. I've only seen one this particular example. 
And I think it's kind of cool if you have something different to look at. All right, some unusual. Oops. Well, let's take a look at being a rush day, being a problem for collectors. We find that there were some interesting things done to postmark cancels. The one on the left from Manville, New Jersey, they added an additional date just below the arrow around the postmark. It says 1776. Okay, that seems logical. Ah, but the one on the right from Parkersburg, West Virginia. You take a look at it, and you take a look at the center. It says April, no date, 197. The six is missing, yet it was used in canceled notes. Again, they probably were rushed into service that early morning, and the postmaster or clerk working at that particular office did not have time to add the date and the year. Uh, this is one I like, it's most humorous. Give you a chance to pause. A humorous spelling error. Notice here where the arrow is. It says what on the postmark? U.S. what? Postal? P-O-S-S-A-L? Oh boy, somebody can't spell. It should say postal service. This one's out of Kansas City. I've seen a number of these. I find this interesting. And nobody caught it, but it's kind of a spelling error. Uh, then, then there were the obsolete hand cancellations that were still in the post office, let's say, that were used. And most of these were what's called a duplex. It has a city, state, and date, and it also has a number one, two, three, four, five for whatever branch used it. Now, these, they were phased out in by 1960. And it's interesting that post offices still had them available. The one here from Wyoming, Hawaii is interesting. I had no postage. See, we start seeing things. On the left, we got one from Sar Saratoga here in California with the, with, the, with the stamp and with the cancel. These are not supposed to have been used. Also, it said also there were no postal meters to be used, but postal meters were rented out to various customers and used mainly by businesses. Most of them used red inks. And I highlighted the one here on the right with Honolulu. It's a little darker, but these are machines you could do that. And we've had people cancel and we found out back in 74, 73, and we'll cover just a few counterfeits or fakes as we get to the end of the program. But postal meters again, here we have one from Denver. And then we have one here from Worcester, Massachusetts. Now the green label, is used inside a post office at this particular period of time in the 1970s. It was on a white strip, and they would what? This is not one you stick on. You would lick and stick. So this one, and they're done in green ink. So we know this was done inside at the post office on a mail strip rather than putting a stamp. Obviously, the person that brought it in didn't have a postage stamp. Why they didn't buy one, I don't know. Or perhaps the post office says, look, we'll just put this on it to say you paid 13 cents postage. Again, kind of interesting variation. Uh, how about a few postmarks of the old red seals? Out with the old, in with the new. Well, on, the on the left here, we've got one from Grants, New Mexico. Now, this is the new post office, or new, new $2 bill. On the left, what do we have here? We've got a 28G series. That's postmarked as well. So the collector probably brought the two together. These came in a collection to me a number of years back. And then again, well, there were more of them. Warren, Ohio had one. Largo, Florida did one. And there were several others that postmarked the old. Again, these shouldn't have been done, but it was collectors. It was fun. It was a bicentennial. And it was one heck of a fun day. Well, what about non-U.S. postmarked? notes and we saw earlier a couple that had rubber stamps on it especially the one from el paso texas now these are technically not postal issues but these are stamps that are put on by banks or other institutions on the left here we've got a red ink sample look at the arrow dated april 13th where is it from the federal reserve in chicago uh, notice what the bottom says it's doing. It's paying out currency. It doesn't say the word out, but it's paying currency. 
So someone obviously went to the ranch there, got a note or notes, and they actually stamped them at the Federal Reserve Branch. The one on the left was a black ink one. It's from Bradford County, of Tawanda, Pennsylvania. It shows the bank issue. And then here we go again. We can go on the left, another bank, a black ink issue. First National Bank of New Jersey. Preakness office. Hmm, I thought it might be for betting, but that was just the name of the office. So there's no horse betting involved in this. But it's interesting that it had a time stamp on the date. 2.53 p.m. Interesting when that particular note was picked up. And here on the right side, we've got two in purple stamps. Equi Bank, N.A., in Texas. Now, it's interesting that this particular individual put a postage stamp on it. Yet, none of those two pur purple you know, bank stamps are on that particular note. And here we have a piece de resistance. A bank date left and a post office postmark. And this is from Seertown in Georgia. Look at the huge bank where they got it from, dated April 13th. And right down the street, probably next door, is the post office council. There are also special issues. A lot of them were done by banks. We saw one earlier from Fremont, Nebraska. But here we have one on the left from Santa Clara, Bank of Santa Clara. It's in, an envelope. It's in a little plastic holder. The bank issued them, signed by the bank manager, and the one from Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the right from Utica National Bank, is imprinted on the reverse. It looks like the bank managers had time. I wonder what they sold these for. Never could find out any information on them. All right, rule six: postmark ink color will be only in what red or black for April thirteenth. Was this true? Again. No, no, and no. Here's a typical example on the left of a red one from Springfield, Massachusetts. And one from one of the favorite cities I like is Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and has one of the roller cancels. So what else was it? Oh, gosh. Sorry, school district. Okay, here we have on the left, which we call a magenta. Now, magenta was a combination of stamping in red and black ink over the time of days. They were, so there's little variations in colors. But we call it magenta, but it, magenta is not the real color. And then we have what let's see, left has Constitution, Ohio, and Neptune, New Jersey. All right, here, uh oh, what do we got here? Well, we got Monticello on the left from Virginia in blue. And we have also Philadelphia. Look at this. Also had blue ink cancels. Don't know why. Post office never said. And then we have various purples, various shades of purples from light. The one on the left, interesting city. I'm sure you're all today winners if you're here being educated by the ANA, but from Winter, South Dakota and Brunswick, Ohio on the right side. And again, even darker purples, Pulaski, New York, and one from Bakersfield. I would expect Bakersfield because it has a pumpkin center to be an orange. And I have that note and I couldn't find it. But on the right here, we have Somerville. It's in a brown. And then the pumpkin one that's somewhere in my holdings that I cannot find, but there is ones that are orange from pumpkin center in Bakersfield, California. Uh, we can still go on with colors, can't we? We have here on the left, green from Des Moines, Iowa. And then here we have pink. Believe it or not, it's a light pink. It's not a red pig from Westerly, Rhode Island. Now we have all sorts of other places that could have postmarks. Think of the various military bases. Here we have one from Marines on the left. And the Army here at Fort Benning, Georgia. I'm going to move along faster. We're running a little bit behind schedule time-wise. But we have here's Air Force bases. Castle on the left from California. Loring Limestone in Maine. McGuire Air Force Base. Nellis Air Force Base. We have Hill Air Force Base. And then, of course, 
But Ella Weather Air Force Base, well, not actually a base, but on the right here, we have the United States Air Force Academy at Colorado, Colorado Springs area. Naval bases, well, of course, we have Texas Corpus Christi, and we have Honolulu here on the right, Naval Terminal. How about ships themselves? There's a number of them that cancel them. On the left, we got the USS Vulcan, and on the right, the USS Paul Revere canceling stamps. I notice this one again on the, from Paul Revere only has four cent stamps. Well, for collectors, the ultimate goal that particular day was to have both notes signed by the U.S. Treasurer Francine Neff and Treasury Secretary William Simon. This particular example is one of those, and it's also postmarked at the what Washington D.C. the Treasury Station. Great collectible. Interesting here is a Lodi, California. Now it has an April 12th postmark on the left side, signed by Mrs. Neff. And the date, what? April 12th. The note on the right is from Lodi, April 13th. Now, by looking at the serial numbers on the particular notes, the one there on the left probably was an early morning cancel that the clerk forgot to change the date on the castle. And the one on the right is, is the correct date for a little bit later in the day. But the first one probably, and I thought it'd be nice to have Miss Neff sign it. Now, how about other individuals? Here's one from La Lutz in New Mexico, April 13th, signed by Ronald Reagan. And one of my favorites is the reverse here, which was signed by all his designers and engravers. I'll let you enjoy that as well. Those are the three individuals that were involved in the engraving, designing, and printing part, or what they call the picture part of the note. Postmasters got into the spirit too as well. Here we have a number that were signed by the postmasters. On the left, Morristown, signed by Robert Tracy. Reading, Pennsylvania, signed by Henry W. Hebert. Here we have one in Florida on the left, Ann Clark in Oxford, <coughs> Oxford, Oregon, my throat. Um, next one down here we have on the left, the at USS Hull, signed by Timothy W. Hall, a Navy postal clerk, writes right on the note. And he's also dated it below it April 22nd, but it also bears a New York postmark later on, no postage. And then one from my favorite Woodstock. Now, not Vermont. This is the gentleman. He passed away shortly after servicing. He was postmaster there. For those of you that like to collect on, Robert R. Rota was postmaster at Washington, D.C., and he was in charge of all the mail at that time that went in and out of the House of Representatives. And he was selling these notes, you know, for a hundred bucks a piece. And at the time, I don't think he sold many because later on, they became available for as little as 10 bucks. But he had a postmark in his own station. He had them stamped and signed by him. Now I want to get some fun because my background is actually in botany. I got my degrees in botany at UCLA over the years. But topical collection areas is where we can have some fun. I'm going to quickly go through these as we're running up close to time. But my focus here is on botany and plants. And here we have the first one to look at is at Cucumber, West Virginia. Yes, there's the post office on the right. Flora, Mississippi. Here we have Rose, Nebraska, dated April 14th, the day after. And Cotton Plant, Arizona or cut that Arkansas, excuse me, Yucca, Arizona, Joshua Tree, California, Clarkia, beautiful light pink annual flower. It's on a star note. People weren't looking for those at the time and had their notes canceled. How about Azalea, Oregon? How about Ponderosa, New Mexico? Ah, here's one, a shamrock for those of you that are Irish. From Oklahoma, Spruce, Michigan. Oops. How about trees? Well, this, some of these post albums you see CLSD have been closed since the 76, just shortly afterwards in the reduction of post office. But here's trees, Louisiana. 
One of my favorites, again, Sunflower, Mississippi, closed post office. Sweetgrass, Montana, again, a star note. Mesquite, Nevada, Magnolia, Arkansas, Plumtree, North Carolina. There you go, Almond Lovers, Almond, New York, Primrose, New York, Manzanita, Lily, South Dakota. Let's move on to a few holidays. Want to have some fun. Those of you that have Thanksgiving, you either have ham, and there's no city named ham, of course, unfortunately, in the United States. But there is one called for the Thanksgiving turkey, which is at Turkey, Texas. And here's the post office here showing a turkey toast. And there's what postmark was. Now, most of my postmarks, you know, are very sharp, and you can read them. That's the only ones that I bought or collected. Uh, it's Christmas time. What are you going to do? Well, there's a couple of cities named Christmas. Christmas, Florida here on the left. Christmas, Michigan on the right. Oh, what's Christmas without what? Santa Claus. Here we have Santa Claus, Indiana. The other one we have here, North Pole. Oh, well, that's where Santa was hanging out in Alaska. Related, how about Nazareth, Pennsylvania? Bethlehem. These are more fun Christmas times. Still more Christmas related. Holly Tree, Alabama. Here's one. This, this is one I didn't think this is later postmark here, but it shows the full city where they postmarked the one from Mistletoe, Kentucky. This particular post office was an old wooden shed, it looked like, from the Old West about the late 1880s. And how about Yuletide Cheer? We've got Silver Bell, Arizona. Post office is closed. Snowflake, Arizona. And let's go on. How about Valentine's Day? This is a very fun one. Arizona has a Valentine, Arizona. And so does Nebraska. Lovelock, Nevada. And of course, right there in Colorado, we have a beautiful council from each year that's done at Loveland, Colorado. Rocks, minerals, agate, topaz. Topaz is no postmark. And it was the day, the day before with no postage. Quartzite. Herodite, interesting cities. We don't think about them. Here's one, Radium, Jasper. How about birds? Sure, they're all over the place. On the left, we've got one here from Crow's Landing, California. And here one, not very readable. I had to enhance this to make you able to see it. Very light. It's from Pelican, Alaska. Bird City, Kansas, White Pigeon, Michigan. And here's one on here from Maine, Owl's Head, Eagle, Wyoming. Or I'm sure Wisconsin. How about aliens that we think about? Hmm, Area 51. We're all concerned. On the left, you'll see the post box outside the post office there at Roswell, New Mexico. It's it covers even on April 13th. <coughs> the mail for the city. A friend of mine here looking on the left. Where do I drop off my new two dollar bill to get it postmarked at Area 51? And of course, here's the result on the left, alien mail, possibly, but it's postmarked on April 13th at Roswell, New Mexico. Gam gaming cards with Sholo, Kino, Oregon. You're lucky at slots, how about Jackpot, Nevada? How about lucky here? I put an E in it, misspelled a little bit differently on the postmark. It's also got a full house on the zip code, interesting. How about numismatics? We're here for numismatics. Okay, running a little, still behind. But here we have a city, there's one city named Money, Illinois. That's Pope pictured here on the left. On the right, we have Indian Head, it's upside down, but that's how it was canceled from. Here we have on the left, Money Grove from PA, believe it or not. And then we have on the right, Penny Farms, Penny. How about mints related? Well, this particular one on the left is from San Francisco. This is the registry station for parcels going out at that time from the new San Francisco mint, which is up on the hill. And of course, Carson City, well, we all know the CC. How about a couple of others here? Deposit, New York on the left. Fort Knox here on the right in Kentucky. How about creating a five cent coin here? We can use two states for that. On the left, we've got Black Diamond which is the Buffalo, right? And here we have next to the Buffalo, Wyoming is actually the city Buffalo. So we've created a nickel here. Errors on currency, sure. 
There's a lot of them. This particular one on the left has a butterfly extra range. Look at the arrow. How about a star note? Look at the low serial number here on one from Brunswick, Missouri. How about the overprints? Look at the shift in here of the overprints on the left from Danbury. And these were out there in circulation and people postmarked them. Didn't even notice the errors. And on the right here, Birds, Birdsboro, PA, is a major center complete off shift. Everything shifted to the right. Radar notes, yeah, here's a couple. One from Seattle, there was a serial number there. And Rockport as well, there was a serial number there. Funny cities, well, why Arizona? I don't know. First base, I don't know. How about only in Tennessee? Hygiene issues, we have hygiene Colorado versus the sweet Idaho. I think for Bigfoot, well, you have to go to Texas for that. They've got a post office that put Bigfoot and on Wisconsin here on the left as a foot bill. Here's one I don't even want to try to pronounce from Alabama. Chaka Loco. Can you imagine them saying that I'm from Chaka Loco, Alabama? That was a surprise to me. There's surprise Arizona. How about cool things? There's a cool California. And of course, Georgia, which I put with it, Dracula or Dacula. And Mr. T from the old A team, Bad Axe, Boiling Springs. Ah, here's what we all need here from Montana, wisdom. And then Oregon has a talent. There's opposites too here. We have West Virginia War. And Georgia has eat food. Sure, you eat a sandwich. What do you usually put on it? Well, you go to Sandwich, Illinois, and you go to Mayo, Maryland. Now, there's a fun one. I'll let you enjoy these two from Oklahoma and Pennsylvania. And then you whoops, admire freedom, independence, friendship. I'm going to go through this because I'm running out of time. I wanted to have some. Here's one a political satire from Kentucky Democrat, but the office is closed, and liberal. It might say it's going fishing. Oh, yeah, you can do those. Fly Creek, you need to fly to catch a trout. These are two. Again, more fishing. Fish Haven, Fish Tales, most of these smaller post offices are closed. Here's one Corbin. That was where the first Colonel Sanders was. There are also a number of cities that are postmarked from Jefferson, Washington, and Lincoln. There are 22 cities and versions of Jefferson in the United States. There's a couple here. Jefferson, Colorado. Jefferson, Ohio. Here we have a Jefferson, Georgia. Oh, 10 cents. And we have a Jefferson, South Carolina, uh oh, one cent postage. Washington, there are 22 cities, plus the city of George in the state of Washington. Lincoln, same thing. There's 29 cities with Lincoln. Oh, it's the color. And there's also 35 cities with Franklin. On the left, your four cents postage. 26 cities with Clinton. Ah, but there's only one name, George or Bush, that's in Louisiana. And there's also only one name, Jim Thornton, the great American. Well, as we're getting down to the end here, some people like to always ask questions, and I try to put them in here. There are fakes and examples of post of notes that have been canceled for whatever purpose. The one on the left is an absolute fake because the stamp was not issued until January 3rd, 1977. There's no way it could have a postmark of 1976. Again, it's a fake postmark here, according to Treasury records. The serial number is way too high to have been issued on that particular day. Another fake snowshoe. This, whoever's making these up are doing a good job. The stamp of Lafayette was not issued or released or even available until June 13, 1977. And on the right, you'll see the genuine postmark from a $2 bill. I zeroed in on it from Snowshoe. This particular design that was fake started about 2000, 2001. And again, we have more counterfeit ones. The one on the, left, the, one on the right is a sheet of four that you buy from the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. These weren't released till nearly six to seven months after the April 13th design. It's on a district one and it would not have a district three postmark on it. 
Well, some people just love the smell of money. And I give you a chance as we're winding down here to guess at the actress here. If you know her alter ego, you can identify the actress. There's a recent movie remade of this particular woman, and we're calling her Wonder Woman because that is the original Wonder Woman. Well, you get a refund from notes. Well, by now, you want a break. And so in closing, I want you to remember a couple of things here. We'll stop and have a coffee break. I guess you want to stay in Montana, and we'll have some pie. And I want to give a special thank you, especially to the ANA and a few of its staff. And on the left, we have a post office marked Kimberly, Wisconsin. I guess this is what our executive director, Kimberly Kick, uses. And on the right, we have our host today, staffer for the e-learning program, Logan Curtis. And here we have her postmark, I guess you would say, from Logan, New Mexico. Well, April 13th is a day to remember. I know we covered a lot here in this time, but it will forever be there. But the story doesn't end there. And I'm not gonna go into this, but there's a whole July 4th story. That's a whole new collectible that followed that particular time to our happy birthday. So with that, Logan, I will turn it back to you. Perfect, thanks. That was a wonderful seeing my own name. <laughs> yes. And then also the Chicken Alaska one made me laugh. Oh, that's one of my favorite too. I visited that post I was a number of years back. It's up in the hills. It's fun. So it looks like we have one question, but he says he covered, you covered it already. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, please put them in the chat or the Q and A and I'll read them to Walt before we hop off. And if anybody there is in the chat too, that has items they would like to sell or consider that are postmarked, I may not have the city from, you can email me and you can do the, write it there as well, Logan Ostromacki at money.org. Sure. So if you want to do that, because I'm beginning when I did a couple of other programs, people emailed, but if you have any tools that you have, or you want to send me a photograph or you know, tell me what city it's from, I may or not, if you have some unusual names, I'd certainly be willing to purchase them. They usually pay between seven and $10, depending on quality of the no cancel. So if you have that, you're welcome to do that. I, if you have questions, you can write afterwards. Yeah, so I put that in the chat. It looks like we don't have any other questions. Okay, so that's thank good. you again, Walt. That was a wonderful presentation. I Very hope you enjoyed it. I did. And thank you again to the uh, to Gray Sheet for, for being a partner of this, this e-learning academy and making it all possible. Uh, again, I put the the address, email address for him and the, oh, oh I made it, hold on one more second. I'll put it <laughs> again. In the chat. I made it to where only host and panelists could see. Okay. Oh, one more time. Okay. It's there. I'll leave it a, a couple yeah. seconds so that you guys can grab that and reach out to Walt anytime. Okay. And thanks again, Walt, for, for doing welcome. this for me. It's been my pleasure. All righty. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get off now and okay. you guys have a wonderful day and you All take right. care, Walt. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Man.